When we look at the Vika study design for both text response and comparative, what's written there could be hard to follow. I mean, what is this? What do these things mean? Explicit and implied, analytical interpretations, meta language. What? I remember when I was studying and I'd read these and I'd get a general gist of what it meant, but I wasn't 100% sure. Today, I'm gonna help you break down these key knowledges into simple, easy to action terms and show you examples on what you have to do in your exam to pass the VEKA criteria. Rest assured, you've probably already started doing some of these without even knowing it, but it's always helpful for you to understand the bigger picture so that you can go into your exam confident that you're nailing these points. Now I'm going to move beyond the basics, like making sure that you answer the prompt, which is a given. I'm going to include the finer details that you need to include in your essay. So what are they? Criteria one, context. Two, views and values. Three, different interpretations by different readers. And four, meta language. By knowing and incorporating these four points into your essay writing, you'll be able to advance your essays from a basic discussion solely about themes and characters to an insightful showcase of your interpretation of the author's work. Let's get a better understanding of each of these points and how they add to your analytical interpretation of a text. Criteria one, context. What's the difference between setting and context? Setting is a specific time and place or physical location in the story. For example, 12 Angry Men is set in the summertime in a 1950s court jury room. The setting creates mood and a sense of the world the characters live in. The extreme temperature of the cramped room exemplifies the juror's stress and frustration. A context, however, is a broader term which also considers the situation and circumstances at that time the text was written or is set in. Context helps readers gain a better understanding of themes, ideas and issues explored by the author. So not only is 12 Angry Men set in a courtroom, but it's set in America during the 1950s, a time rife with racism towards African Americans. The white juror's prejudice towards the black defendant parallels the real life white American attitude during that period. Notice by how understanding the context we're able to add a lot more value in our discussion in our essays. We'll be able to touch on the themes of racism, of prejudice, and be able to explore this in more detail because we understand the bigger picture of why the author has written this text and what message that author is trying to teach us. So how does this translate into something meaningful into your essay? Inclusion of context helps you understand the views and values of those people of the time. I'm going to switch text and give you an example for the text Medea. Medea is set in an intensely patriarchal society, a culture that privileges men over women. When Jason leaves his wife Medea for another woman, Medea is expected to be submissive and accept her fate due to her inferior status as a woman. As a proto-feminist, Euripides, the author, thwarts traditional traits of women and ridicules men's misogynistic actions. Criteria two, views and values. A good starting point for views and values is to adopt the mindset that all texts are written with a purpose. Authors want to tell us something, send us a message and share their understanding of the world. Therefore, every author has a choice in how they construct a text to demonstrate their views and values. So ask yourself, what view does the author want the reader, you, to believe, feel, understand, and acknowledge? Here's an example for the text Station Eleven. While post-apocalyptic tales tend to focus on the action around the impact of a fictional disaster, Mandel's novel speaks to the attitudes and characteristics of people which drive any action that occurs. She interrogates central questions about human society, inviting readers to consider what human qualities can endure an apocalypse, what qualities are timeless. Criteria three, different interpretations by different readers. Every reader develops unique interpretations of a text because of their own personal beliefs, values, and experiences. Different readings may include dominant readings, alternative readings like resistant readings, gender readings, Freudian readings, and even post-colonial readings. There's no single correct interpretation of a text study. Texts can have various levels of meaning. In your essay, you might even write, while well, some may perceive, others may believe, to showcase your understanding that different interpretations do exist, depending on the audience. Here is an example from Frankenstein. In Frankenstein, the absence of a female role is a deliberate choice by the author 
and is interpreted by some readers as a method to uphold literature standards of Shelley's era, when men dominated novels. Meanwhile, other readers ponder the feminist message embedded in the text, that perhaps Frankenstein is intended to expose the uneven representation of the sexes during this period. I've done a more detailed video about different interpretations previously, so head on over to watch that video after this one. Criteria 4. Meta language. Meta language, also known as literary devices, linguistic features, or language elements, is language that describes language. When you're writing an essay, our description of the way an author constructs a text through words such as characterization and symbolism are all terms referred to as meta language. So ask yourself, how does the author use language to portray a certain character or idea in a particular way? Here's an example from Old New Poems. The use of the colloquial idiom of kept pace only with the Jonases in Felix Skerzenecki references how his belonging only feels surface deep. However, as they are only the Jonases of his own mind's making, it also showcases his commitment to not simply copy and to still be individual. Again, I've done a more detailed video diving into meta language, so I'd recommend you have a watch of that too. I'd love to wrap everything all up in this video, but with a lot of these criteria points, there's a lot that can be learned. So don't feel like you need to learn it all in one go. It's something that you will build upon over time and your essays get better and better because of it. I explore each of these four criteria points in my How to Write a Killer Text Response ebook. There are heaps of examples tied to each criteria so you can actually gain a confident understanding into how to exactly incorporate them into your essay. If you're interested, you can also download a free sample of the ebook so to give you an idea of what's inside and I promise you it will be a bang for your buck. Thanks so much for tuning into this video today. I hope that it helps you. Let me know if you've got any questions and I'll speak to you guys soon. Bye.